Good. Okay, so please, Thomas, we are looking forward to the second lecture. Okay. Okay, thank you for to everybody that has stuck to the to the second lecture. So I will I will start uh, by uh, trying to clarify or clarify or further clarify um, uh, a point that came out in the in the questions of the, the lecture that we had the other day, and is this issue of the simultaneous events. Okay, so in as as I said, in uh, in a Markov process, and we will see we will see it a little bit today and more extensively in, in, in the next lecture, why this is the case. In a Markov process, you cannot have this uh, simultaneous event thing, okay? So you can have only one thing happening at a time, okay? But that doesn't mean that only one change or, or, or only changes of plus one and minus one can occur. So for example, here in this definition, uh, this equation here defines the rate and defines this quantity Ri that it's the change in the state val in the in the state variable associated with uh, event i. Okay, so here, if the model or the dynamics of the system requires it to be so, this Ri can be uh, I mean whatever number you 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 want. So it can be it can be one, but it can also be uh, three. It can be minus five. It can be whatever it makes sense in terms of the dynamics of the system. Okay. And the other thing is that you can have, for example, if we look at the at the law of mass action, at the law of mass action, like uh, we were the other day, we can have uh, two body interactions, for example, like in these two cases here, or you can have three body interactions. And in fact, you can have uh, many body interactions, as many as the model requires, okay? So th this means that you can only have one event happening at a time. But that event can sort of uh, involve many different uh, uh, particles or species. And the, the, uh, the way in which this affects the state of the system doesn't need to be just plus one or minus one. It can be whatever it is that it makes sense in terms of whatever process you are trying to model, okay? So I, I, hope, that's, um, I hope that's clearer now. So I'm going to, oops. I'm going to see, there it is. Okay, so I'm going to share now uh, today's lecture. This is the one. Okay. Oh. I cannot go to presentation mode. That's, um, that's unfortunate. Okay, let me see if I share the whole screen. Well, that's, um, I don't know what's going on. Hold on a second. No. Okay, I'm um, sorry, but uh, yeah. uh, I don't know what's going on here. We'll have to, can you, can you see it? Okay. Yeah, yes, we can see okay. it. That's right. then let's, let's go on with this. Okay, so, um, so, uh, so the, the, the other day we, we saw this sort of motivation and then so kind of informal um, introduction to, to what I was uh, going to tell you during the course. So uh, today's lecture is it's not going to be very much more formal, but it's going to be, but at least we are going to define several things um, in, a, in a more sort of principled way. We will uh, derive the master equation from the 
sort of fundamental equation of the Markov process, which is this uh, chapman kolmogorov equation. And then we will move to uh, a, a subject that I, I like very much, and I hope that uh, perhaps, um, uh, well, for, I mean, those of you who are, who haven't done any, any physics, perhaps you will find it uh, a bit strange, but uh, I, will, I will try to explain it um, so that everybody can understand, okay? So we will start by, uh, well, defining what this Markov property thing is, okay? So, uh, you know, first of all, just some basic uh, definitions. I'm sure that uh, all, of, all of you are familiar with this, but just to refresh the memory and, 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 and um, uh, uh, do the notation. Okay, so this is the definition of the pro so the definition of the probability of the conditional probability. This is the probability of uh, an event or a, uh, a occurring, knowing that uh, b has already occurred. Okay, and this is by the, the definition of the conditional probability. This is the probability of uh, both events occurring divided by the probability of uh, B occurring, okay? So basically this is um, uh, the physical meaning of this is that uh, you sort of discount by dividing by the probability of B, you already discount the probability that that thing has already occurred. So that's how you incorporate in the definition of the probability, the knowledge of things that uh, have already happened or that you know that uh, they have already happened, okay? And very close to this, uh, to, this con to this concept of conditional probability is bias th is uh, this uh, Bayes theorem or whatever this is pronounced in English uh, that tells us that the conditional probability of uh, A given B can be written in terms of the probability of B uh, given A just uh, using this, um, this, um, this result. Okay, so this, this second equality here is base uh, is a Bayes theorem, okay? And we will we will use that uh, later, okay? And the 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 definition of the probability density function is 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 here is just uh, is 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 given here. So basically, the the probability density function is uh, this is defined for um, or is defined for continuous uh, random variables, and it's uh, and it's. Uh, so that uh, p of x multiplied by uh, d of x is the probability that uh, the uh, random variable um, uh, belongs uh, into this interval. Okay, and uh, well, the fundamental properties of the of this PDF is that uh, it has to be normalized to one. Okay, so this is what when you integrate over all the uh, space is, is yeah, this has to be equal to one, and that the probability of x being between uh, two values x one and x two is given by this integral here. Okay, and this my and this equal to one here is a mistake. But this is this is this shouldn't be here. Okay, so this probability the, the the property is this one here. Okay, so this probability here is equal to this integral. Apologize for that. Okay, so. What is a Markov process? So in, in a very informal way, we can define a stochastic process as a system that evolves in time in a, probabil in a probabilistic manner and for which we have a random variable X of T uh, that determines the state of the system at time T, okay? So X can be, uh, we will, we will uh, assume that X is a, is a, is a real, is a real variable. Everything that I'm going to do here is going to be in one dimension, but the, all the results uh, can be uh, generalized straightforwardly to uh, n dimensions. Okay, but just to for for the notation to be uh, slightly uh, sort of easier to to deal with and, and understand, I'm going just to do everything in one dimension. But it's all uh, okay in in uh, arbitrary dimension. Okay, so. These systems, these probabilistic systems, are the, in principle described by an infinite set of joint uh, densities. So, like like this one. So here, um, uh, sorry, I'm using here a, a sort of weird notation uh, that it's inherited from the books that I told you uh, the other day. 
So here, this is a function of xn, xn minus one, x1, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So tn here is just a label, just to uh, remind ourselves that tn is the time at which we are observing the system, okay? So this means that we are observing the system at t1 and the state is x1. And then we are observing the uh, system at another time t2 and the, and the state uh, is x2, okay? Is that clear? So T1, T, T1, T2, Tn, et cetera, that's only kind of a label, okay? So the, 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 the density is a function only of the X uh, variables, okay? So in principle, to, uh, to characterize fully uh, one of these stochastic systems, we need a uh, infinite set of joint probabilities like this, or equivalently uh, by a set of joint uh, probability densities like this one, okay? And you can, you can go from one to the other using uh, the definition of the conditional probability, okay? Now, as you can imagine, this is in general uh, intractable. Uh, mathematically, numerically, analytically, doesn't matter, okay? So uh, we cannot deal with this in, in practice and therefore we need to uh, impose additional conditions so that uh, we can study the system. Okay, and um, one of these uh, conditions that can be imposed upon the system is that the system is a Markov process. Okay, and this is defined by um, the Markov property. Okay, and the Markov property basically means that the system has lack of long-term memory. Okay, specifically, um, uh, we will we assume if we assume the Markov property, which is the assumption that we are going to do all the way in this in these lectures, uh, we are assuming that the system loses memory of all its past history, except for the most recent event, okay? So this statement is, uh, as the way we will see in the next lecture, that this statement is equivalent uh, to claiming that the waiting time between two successive events is exponentially distributed. Okay, so we are dealing basically with Poisson processes, essentially. Okay, and uh, in mathematical terms, uh, the Markov property is expressed in this way. Okay, so we have here we have the the the, uh, the state of the system. Okay, at time at some time t n. Okay, and in theory, this uh, this um, this probability depends on the whole history of the system. Okay, so here it, we are, we are assuming that we have observed the system n minus one times at times T1, T2, blah, 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 Tn, Tn minus one, okay? And we have registered that history, okay? So in principle, if we don't assume anything else, our, our, our system, the probability of observing an, some, some state at time Tn depends on that history, okay? By assuming um, uh, that the system is a Markov system, a Markov process, this is assumed to be equal to this uh, one here. So basically here, what we have said is the system has forgotten all its past history except the most immediate uh, event, okay? So that's, um, that's it. And uh, this is uh, very nice because then uh, this property allows us to write the joint uh, PDF, okay? In this infinite hierarchy that we were talking about uh, earlier, just in terms of this of this function here. Okay, so this is sometimes called the propagator, and particularly, but the, in the in the physics literature, this is called the propagator because it has this property. Okay, so you can you can express all this. Uh, so you, given given that you had some sort of initial condition, okay, you can express the whole uh, state of the system just in terms of this uh, sort of conditional probability. Okay, so this is just the definition. Okay, and, and it's it's um, it's it's very it's it's uh, it's it's very easy. You just need to think that you forget everything that has uh, occurred except for the uh, last event that you registered. Okay. Now, um, if there are no more questions, again, I, as 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 the other day, I cannot see any 
anything here. So if someone has a question, just interrupt or send it to the chat and Stefan Ella will uh, transmit it. Okay, so um, uh, a direct sort of mathematical consequence of the, of the assumption that the system is a Markov process is this uh, result that the, uh, we call the chaman kolmogorov equation. Okay, so that's, um, so we can, so we, to, to derive this, we start by considering this identity, okay? So this identity is just the marginal probability. Okay, so every, everybody is, is familiar with these things. I mean, this is, this is first course probability theory, but I don't know if everybody has uh, taken such a thing as a first course in probability theory. Okay, so well, I, I will assume if nobody complains, I will assume that everybody understands this. So this is just the, 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 um, the marginal probability. Okay, so we express this, uh, this transition probability in terms of uh, this quantity here, just by integrating over all the uh, sort of intermediate states. Okay, now, uh, this quantity here, okay, can be uh, expressed in this way. So this is essentially the uh, definition of the conditional probability, okay? So now we, we are looking at the probability of X3 and X2 conditioned to X1, okay? So this means that according to the, to the, to the definition that we uh, did of uh, conditional probability, this is equal to the probability of X3, the joint probability of X3, X2, and X1 divided by the probability of X, of X1. Okay, so that's just applying um, um, applying the definition of conditional probability. Okay, so now we uh, take this thing and we multiply by and we multiply and divide by this joint probability by the joint probability of X2 and X1. Okay, so that's just um, trivial, and then. Um, we apply again here the definition of the uh, conditional probability. Okay, so this quantity here. Oops, no. So this um, this first uh, this first factor here is exactly equal to uh, this conditional probability, and this second factor here is this uh, conditional probability. Okay, and now we apply the Markov process, uh, the Markov property. To this one, okay, and because uh, if the system is Markov, uh, is a Markov process, this probability, uh, this conditional probability here is only a condition to x1. Uh, sorry, to x2. X1 we can forget because that belongs to the sort of uh, uh, past of the system. Okay, so we can we can write this uh, this uh, integrand here in this way. Okay, just by so this probability here is just the product of the two uh, transition probabilities. Okay, and now we put this expression back here in the integral, and what we have is uh, the chapman kolmogorov equation. Okay, the chapman kolmogorov equation states that the conditional probability of uh, going from x1 at time t1 to x3 at time t3 can be obtained as the um, integral of the two transition of uh, these two transition probabilities where we integrate over all the intermediate states. Okay. So we, we, we know that we are departing from X1. We know that we can, that we want to arrive to X3 and then we uh, calculate all the possible uh, intermediate, the probabilities of all the, pro of all the uh, intermediate uh, states, okay? And then we integrate over, over all of these uh, intermediate states and that gives us the uh, uh, global transition probability, okay? Is that clear? Yes? Yes, yes. Okay, so this is, this is a very nice result that allows us to do a lot of things. And the first thing that uh, this result allows us to do 
is to um, uh, formulate the, the master equation, okay? Because this equation is for a, for a Markov process, this equation is completely, is exact and it's, um, um, and it's, um, well, it's just, uh, and, you know, a result that uh, is derived, so it's, it's a, a result that it's equivalent to the Markov property, okay? But uh, we cannot do a lot uh, with that equation in that, in that form, okay? So in order to kind of make some uh, progress in order to characterize mathematically, mathematically, the model we are going to derive the master equation that it's uh, this equation that we talked about in the in the first lecture from the uh, from the uh, Chamarco model. Okay. So uh, the master equation is is um, is uh, just a reformulation of the chapman kolmogorov equation that it's kind of easier to handle and can be directly related to physical models via this definition of the of the transition rates that we and that we were looking at the other day okay now we we will start by considering this uh, transition probability okay and we assume that uh, t3 is uh, going to be very close to T2, okay? So uh, we define uh, dt as T3 minus T2, okay? So we are observing the system in at times that are very close to each other, okay? So um, just like the, like the other day, okay? So uh, we have, here we have essentially uh, two options, okay? So we, we, we are going to write a, uh, uh, probability, a balance of probability for this uh, transition probability, okay? So this is the, so this is the probability of going from X2 to X3, okay? So we have, here we have two different options, okay? So we, the, so the system was, either the system was already at X3 at time T2, Okay, which is expressed by this uh, Dirac delta here. This means that uh, the state uh, hasn't changed. So X, X3 and X2 are, are identical. And this means that, so this is the sort of the, 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 the probability of uh, this event uh, happening, the, the event that X2 is equal to X3. And then this is the probability, this term here is the probability that, um, nothing happens in the in the time interval okay and this is the probability of uh, and this uh, thing here is the probability of so this w is the same as we had in the is the same sort of um, um, uh, function that we had uh, that we had the other day in the master equation okay so this is the um, the probability rate of uh, a transition from X2 to X3, okay? And this must be multiplied by delta by dt uh, in order to be, uh, in order for it to be a, a probability, okay? Now, because this quantity here is the probability of nothing happening, okay? This means that uh, this quantity here, A0, okay? must be given by this, uh, by this. So, but this is essentially the probability that you go from X2 to any value of X3, okay? So this is, this is the sum. So this integral here is the probability per unit time of uh, moving from X2, okay? So this multiplied by delta by DT is the probability in that interval of leaving X2, okay? And one minus the probability of leaving X2 is the probability of extending X2, which is equal to X3, okay? So here, X2 and X3 are, are interchangeable because we have this, uh, this uh, uh, Dirac delta here, okay? So now, um, we now go back to the, uh, so we now, now we, we, we go back to this, uh, to the Chapman homograph equation, okay? So we put 
here the, this, this expression that we just, uh, this uh, probability balance that we just wrote for uh, the uh, transition probability from X2 to X3. Okay, and then, so we, we, we rearrange terms. Okay, so essentially uh, we um, integrate this, the, with this one multiplied by this, um, by this delta can be introduced uh, here and then we can, we can, uh, we can integrate this uh, immediately because of the properties of the delta function. Okay, and we have, and we have the, the, this thing, okay. So is that clear, more or less? It's it's very easy. It's just a matter of doing the um, the algebra with a bit of care, and, and that's um, and it's not a problem. Okay, and again, using uh, taking the limit uh, dt going to zero, we obtain uh, this equation. Okay, where we have used that uh, this uh, quantity here is given by this integral. Okay, so and again, I mean this is. And this is the uh, this is the, the 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 expression of the master equation for a continuous process. Okay, so here x is a continuous is a continuous variable. Okay, so the changes can be uh, integer, can be uh, real, can be whatever they are. Okay, and and here you can see that we have exactly the same the same balance of probability that we wrote the other day. Okay, so the time derivative of this uh, transition probability is written as the, uh, as, well, as, as the, the, the difference between uh, the rate of um, uh, going into X3 coming from uh, any other state. And this is the probability of going out of X, uh, going out of X3 uh, going to whatever uh, other state it's, it's about. Okay, so this is this is exactly the same equation in, in a continuous set in a continuous setting as we were looking at the other day. Okay, and it's the same balance of probability. It's probability rate of pro the probability per unit time in minus probability per unit time out. Okay, so that's it's it's uh, it's the same thing. Okay, now uh, just to recover what we uh, were writing the other day we can go uh, to a discrete uh, setting, okay, by uh, considering that only a discrete set of transitions uh, are possible, okay? So here we are assuming that we have a continuous kernel that uh, allows us to, uh, to move between any two real values of, uh, of X, okay? And that's why we have the integral there. So here, what we are going to take, uh, what we are going to, to say is, okay, we, we don't have that, we have just that given given an state, we can just move only to a discrete. Uh, so uh, X is going to, uh, capital X is now uh, uh, a discrete variable, uh, in general, uh, 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 a positive integer, okay, or zero. And um, uh, we can have uh, only uh, discrete uh, modifications of the, of the state of the system, okay? And, then, and therefore, so we can, we have, uh, instead of having this kernel, we have probabilities associated to each one of these of these changes. Okay, so here x two would be x, and x three would be a discrete set of values of x given by x plus r i, where r i is the change associated with each one of these transitions. Okay, and if we do that. Uh, we introduce this in the in the in the integral equation. What we have is is this expression, which is exactly the same as we had uh, the other day. Okay. So yeah, and uh, this just by um, uh, expanding uh, expanding uh, using a doing a Taylor expansion of this term here, we can rewrite this in this operational form where uh, we are using this uh, sort of representation of the translation. Yeah. 
this is a bit weird, but uh, if you just uh, if you just take this term here and do the Taylor expansion, uh, you will see that uh, that this is this is the same. Okay, so this is just uh, a representation of the translation operator. Okay, so here you are taking this you are taking this function. Okay, and you are uh, uh, sort of translating it by a factor r i. Okay, so and this thing is the um, uh, translation operation for for translation operator for uh, a translation of r i. Okay, so again, this is this is uh, this is a bit weird, but uh, but uh, yeah, I mean you can you can do it with and convince yourself that this is uh, this is correct. Okay, so um, I think this is a natural place to stop for a few minutes. Yeah. yeah. Just to digest all this. <laughs> yeah. It's it's very easy. Yeah. So I, I have I have uh, I have uh, explained it very fast because I, I I like to have time for for this second part. <laughs> but uh, but it's not it's not it's very it's all very elementary. So. If you just sit down and and go yes. through the maths. Uh, after you send us the the slides, also the, the other lecture. Oh yes, I forgot. I I will yes, I will I will I will I will send it uh, both uh, today. Yeah, yes. yeah, it's great. Okay, so we can have a five minute five break. Minutes. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. Back in five minutes.
podemos cambiar back yes mm. sure. i was saying yes but with the microphone off sorry yeah everything fine can you hear me yes yes, yes. perfect okay. yes yes okay so um I will start if, uh, if that's okay. So uh, we uh, mentioned uh, in the in the first lecture that um, the master equation can be rarely solved uh, analytically, and that we um, usually must resort to sort of numerical uh, simulation to sample the distribution, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But um, uh, in 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 some in some uh, under some conditions uh, that are related to um, uh, big system size uh, that's equivalent to uh, low noise, as we sort of mentioned also the other day, we can we can um, we can do some asymptotics, and uh, we can derive uh, under certain in certain cases. Uh, analytical approximations, not exact results, but analytical approximations to certain quantity. Hello? Okay. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. It was someone with a open mic. Sorry, I thought. Uh, okay, so, um, and that's, uh, and that's, and, and this is, this is the case for the, uh, uh, some stat for the statistics of rare events. Okay, so rare events are, uh, uh, we actually saw an example of this, uh, well, actually two examples of this in, in the first lecture, where, where we observed these transitions between the different attractors, attractors in the, bi, in the bistable system, or the extinction event in the, in the stochastic logistic uh, equation, okay? So um, when, when, uh, when the system size is big, and did we actually discuss this, if I remember correctly, when the system size is big, these events uh, have a very low uh, probability of occurring and you have to wait a lot, a very long time uh, for them to happen. That's why uh, they, are, they are called rare events. That's because the, the frequency is very, very low, okay? And uh, uh, usually, uh, or the, at least the kind of, of rare events that I'm going to uh, talk about today are uh, related or driven by large fluctuations, okay? Typically, of the same order of um, the average value of the of the random variable. Okay, so that's why we are talking about large fluctuations because we are not talking about the statistical fluctuations around some mean. We are talking about uh, global changes uh, that sort of change the state of the system in a in a very significant way. Okay, so um, and uh, yeah, so the, 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 these events uh, uh, sort of are, are intrinsically non Gaussian uh, because we are not studying these small fluctuations around, around some well defined mean. And we need to resort to methods other than sort of diffusive limits uh, of the master equation. Okay. Um, and uh, well, the, the statistics of, of rare events. So basically, typically, the frequency of a, of a, of a rare event is um, uh, asymptotically when you have, uh, so here epsilon would be uh, the inverse of the system size. So it's, it's uh, the amount of noise that you have in, in the system. So typically the frequency is basically uh, the exponential of the inverse of the inverse of the, of the noise or, or, the, it's, uh, or the system size multiplied by some quantity phi, okay? And uh, the, 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 the issue here is how to calculate or how, estimate, how to estimate this quantity phi, phi. okay? So, and uh, we were seeing the other day two, 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 examples, two examples of this, okay? So uh, one would be um, this transition between, uh, between, um, between two states, okay? So here we have, we have a, a, an example uh, in which uh, the system starts uh, fluctuating around around uh, this uh, stable steady state of the deterministic dynamics. So this is the same example that we saw uh, the other day. So here we have 
to uh, stable steady state. So this would be a bistable system. Uh, these are the, the, the red and uh, blue uh, lines are the null claims of the, of the deterministic system. Okay, and so we have an unstable steady state here, an unstable steady state here, and a, um, a saddle point here. Okay, and this is an example of uh, so the, 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 the dashed lines uh, are examples of trajectories of, of this large fluctuation. So here you start, the dynamics starts fluctuating around this steady state. It stays there for a while, and eventually there is a large fluctuation that takes the system away from this, from the uh, basin of attraction of this fixed point, and it uh, moves uh, onto uh, the other one, okay? And uh, this is related to something that we are going to see now, uh, that it's uh, the, the, the extinction event in the, in the logistic equation, okay? So you start by, so this, this NS would be the current capacity. So you start with a system that it uh, has this uh, uh, steady state here and you move uh, onto extinction, okay? So, um, the, there, are, there are many different ways of uh, tackling this. So a, a mathemat an applied mathematician would just um, take the master equation, look at it as some sort of uh, PDE and uh, applying the WKB asymptotics or something similar, a straightforward way. Uh, a, prob a, prob a probable, a a, a, prob a probabilist would probably use uh, large deviation approximations. I'm neither, I'm a physicist. So I'm going to uh, use what I know about uh, a system that it's uh, formally equivalent to this uh, in order to try to, try to um, uh, uh, analyze uh, the, the asymptotics of the system, okay? So the master equation as, as, we, saw, I, as we saw earlier, uh, can be used, uh, can be uh, written and using this uh, uh, this sort of oper operational notation can be written in this uh, in the form of this uh, differential operator. Okay, yeah. So that's that's just uh, rescaling. That's just rescaling the variables and um, and uh, rewriting things. Uh, just defining this operator H P in this way. Okay. Or we can do this uh, in terms of the corresponding characteristic function. This is something that we saw in the previous lecture, okay? And then we have a, an, um, a PDE that it's related to this one, just um, uh, sort of replicating the kind of um, uh, process that we saw uh, the other day. So we can, we have, so this is again a PDE for the, uh, for, uh, the uh, generating function, okay? So either we, so we can we can we can either work directly with the with the um, with the probability distribution or we can work with the generating function. This is going to depend on the problem. It's going to be better using uh, one or the other. Okay. And here, this omega is uh, the system size. Okay. So this is omega is one over uh, epsilon here. Okay. So if epsilon is very small. Um, Omega is going to be very big. Okay. Now, this is uh, where things uh, get interesting. Okay. Because uh, now the non physicists, I'm sorry, are going to get momentarily a bit lost, but uh, we will recover. We will recover later. Okay. So these two equations, either this one for the probability uh, density or this one for the generating function, are uh, both. Um, like a Schrodinger equations or like Hamilton Jacobi equations. You can, you can think of them as Schrodinger like or uh, Hamilton Jacobi equations. Depends on, so probably Stefanella prefers to think uh, of them as, um, as uh, Hamilton Jacobi equations, but it's, it's, uh, it's, exactly, it's exactly the same. Okay. So if you think of them as uh, a Schrodinger uh, like uh, equations, uh, you can um, you can write the solution to these equations. So, for example, here I am I am now moving on to this uh, uh, the characteristic function, but it can be 
for the uh, for the probability density anyway you you get a very similar result okay where um, you can write the solution to this equation as a path integral okay where uh, so a path integral is basically means that uh, let, let's let's go back to the let's go back to the to the chapman kolmogorov equation for a, for a moment Okay, in the chapman kolmogorov equation, we were obtaining the um, the transition probability between two points by considering uh, two, uh, two, two different transitions with the same initial and end point, and then adding up over all the possible paths between these two, over all the possible in, 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 in intermediate states. Okay, so this is doing this uh, an infinite number of times. Okay, and then what you do is that you write the, the solution of this equation as a sum, as a weighted sum of all the paths. Okay, so you have between x1 and x3, uh, you can have all the different, all the different trajectories, all the different sample paths. Okay, and each one has a weight. Each one of these paths has a weight. And this weight is given by uh, this, uh, this weight here where this uh, funny S here is an, an action functional, okay? So the people that are familiar with, uh, that have done uh, classical mechanics or theoretical mechanics know perfectly what I'm, what I'm talking about, okay? So this is why this is equivalent. It doesn't matter whether you think of this as a, as a sort of quantum uh, Schrodinger-like problem or as a classical Hamilton-Jacobi equation because the answer is exactly the same, okay? So, uh, you have, so the solution of the system, because of this nice uh, Markov property and because of this very nice result that it's the, uh, the chapman kolmogorov equation, you can uh, write the solution of the problem as a sum over all the trajectories of the system. And that's, it, it's one of those trajectories has a weight. And that weight is basically the exponential of the action calculated over that path. Okay, so it's a very nice, I think it's a very nice way of formulating this because uh, yeah, well, we, 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 we will see. It allows us just to do uh, Hamiltonian mechanics and all sorts of uh, very nice things. Yeah, very okay? nice, I agree. So is that, so, but I mean, I, I, the details of this, uh, I understand that are a little bit foggy, but if you understand uh, this thing that the Markov property that it's equivalent to the chapman kolmogorov equation allows us to write the solution of the process as a sum, a weighted sum of all the uh, trajectories between an initial and, an, and, a, and a final state, okay? So this is, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically like a, green, a Green's function, essentially, okay? So this is, uh, this is it, okay? Now, uh, still, I mean, this, this, is, this is a nice way of writing the solution, but still, this is a pretty horrible object that uh, in general, we don't know how to deal with. And we cannot calculate these path integrals uh, with pen and paper, okay? So a way of um, avoiding having to calculate all these, uh, all these, uh, all these integrals by uh, some analytical methods or perturbative methods, it's just by, uh, reminding ourselves that we want to know what is what the behavior of the system is for large system size, okay? And because we have this exponential here of this functional, but it's multiplied by a parameter that it's very big, okay? So that allows us to uh, use an asymptotic method that it's called the Laplace method, okay? And the Laplace method is uh, basically when you have when you have an integral of this type where uh, you are uh, calculated the integral of something multiplied by the exponential of minus a very big parameter for some function, basically this Laplace method uh, allows us to approximate this, uh, this integral by uh, this very simple expression where this capital S is the uh, action uh, calculated over the path that minimizes, or is the, uh, you, so you, you take this, this, this action, you minimize it, 
okay? And then you calculate the action associated to the paths that minimizes the action, okay? And would you quick, you call this quantity S of P of, of T, okay? And then this is, you can approximate if, if, uh, if uh, omega is big enough, you can approximate the solution by this very simple expression, okay? And now the only thing that you have to do is to calculate, is to solve this variational pro problem where you minimize this action, okay? But uh, the most uh, 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 clever of you would have uh, realized already that this is basically uh, the action associated with a Hamiltonian, okay? So the solution of this variational problem is already given in the, in the, in the classical mechanic, mechanics books because this is just solving the uh, Hamilton equations associated to uh, whatever Hamiltonian, whether the, the HG or the HP you are using. Okay, and then you basically solve these um, this, uh, Hamiltonian equations. I mean, this is, this is uh, sort of easier done than, than said than done because, uh, sorry. Um, well, you, this is this is not like an initial value problem in the, that you usually have in mechanics, where you have uh, initial conditions for the momenta and initial condition for the uh, for the coordinates. Here you have uh, it's it's a it's a it's an, a particular type of problem where you have initial condition for the for the q's and final conditions for the p's. Okay, and then you have to do some sort of shooting method or. Or some other or some other way of solving this this equation, but it, this 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 can be this can be done. It can be a non-trivial, but um, it's a kind of numerical problem that we know how to solve. Okay, so um, so this is kind of the general framework in which we are going to move. Okay, so we are going to basically look at. Um, this problem here, or this problem here, okay, which comes from our model, we can translate our model directly into, so we can, we can, uh, we can derive these Hamiltonians uh, directly from our model, okay? We are going to uh, write the corresponding uh, action, functional, okay? And then we are going to solve the corresponding uh, Hamilton equations to find the, uh, to find the minimum action paths, okay? So now, uh, this is one of these results that has been rediscovered uh, several times in human history. Okay? So and here there is, a, there is a list of, of people that has, uh, and as, as you can see, and if we, we, can, we can go on, okay? So I stopped, I stopped in, in, in 1994, but I could have gone on. I mean, this is, this is something that, this is a phenomenon where people ignore uh, the previous work and they think they have, invented the wheel and when they happened. But uh, so this, this has, with this particular uh, problem has uh, happened uh, a number of times. Okay, so, and now that we have, uh, that we have uh, this uh, sort of very nice framework that I hope uh, um, it's kind of clear where it comes from, okay? So we can do uh, analytical mechanics in stochastic dynamics, which I think it's, uh, it's a very nice, it's a very nice uh, thing to do. Okay, so uh, we need to solve these Hamilton equations. And well, uh, I mean, the solution of these equations obviously uh, carry a, a great deal of information about these uh, ray event statistics. Okay, so, um, and uh, because these uh, trajectories live on a, on a, on a surface of, of uh, constant energy. Okay, so this is, this is, this, this, I mean, this Hamiltonian system is not a real Hamiltonian. So there are, there are no forces or there are no, but uh, you, can still, you can still formalize it as a, as a Hamiltonian system. And these trajectories live on a uh, surface of constant energy, okay? So now these ray events are characterized by uh, the trajectory on the corresponding phase space that connects uh, two states, okay? So for example, if we, if we go back here, now we can understand this, this uh, this phase space better. Okay, so this phase space is the uh, phase the, the Hamiltonian uh, is the is I mean this is here we are looking at a model uh, 
uh, for similar to the logistic uh, to the logist the stochastic logistic growth equation that we saw the other day. Okay, and this is this is the uh, the phase space the, for the Hamiltonian for that particular system. Okay, so now this uh, this uh, this state here, the red state, okay, is the corresponds to the deterministic fixed point. Okay, so in the deterministic system, uh, this uh, so the deterministic system lives on this line here. Okay, and in the deterministic system, we can see here these uh, these arrows uh, are telling us that uh, the system is that that the uh, this state here, which corresponds to the carrying capacity, NS is equal to uh, well the uh, carrying capacity essentially. Okay. Now in the in the deterministic trajectory, this is a this is a stable steady state. Okay. So you start somewhere here or somewhere here. Okay. And the system has to go towards uh, the carrying capacity. Okay. But now. Uh, because we have this extended now we, we have this extended uh, phase space where we have uh, the the um, this these two these two coordinates okay and because this is a this is a, a Hamiltonian system and it's conservative the stable fixed point of the deterministic dynamics now becomes a saddle okay because you cannot have it otherwise this wouldn't be a conservative system Okay, and this means that this trajectory here, okay, gives us a escape path from uh, the deterministic fixed point to the extinction fixed point. So zero zero here means that the system has gone into extinction. Okay, so essentially uh, Q multiplied by P is equal to the number of particles or the average number of particles okay so this means that this um this uh this uh line so on this on these black lines the hamiltonian is equal to zero okay so this means that you have here hamiltonian equal to zero and here you have hamiltonian equal to zero and this heteroclinic trajectory that connects both is giving us the most uh, pro so the, the 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 most probable trajectory to connect these two points okay so this is essentially the route to extinction okay well there are this i mean this 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 has to um, have some uh, formal properties Okay, again, this is this is the uh, I'm going to I'm going to skip this because this is the same as we did the other day. This is for this. Uh, this corresponds to this uh, Hamiltonian phase space that I just uh, showed you. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to skip this because this is doing exactly the same as we did uh, the other day. I will I will I will send this with the with the transparencies to Stefanella in case anyone. Uh, okay, and from this uh, from this analysis. We can see just by 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 uh, deriving the so you can you can do it from the beginning. You have uh, the probability rates for the birth and death uh, process. You write the probability balance. With that probability balance, uh, you write your uh, master equation, and from the master equation, you can derive the uh, PDE for the uh, generating function. Okay, and from that PDE for the generating function, you will get. That the the Hamiltonian is is this one, okay? So this means that the uh, Hamilton equation are given by this, and uh, you can you can very easily see that this is the corresponding phase space, okay? So you have when uh, when uh, p equal to one is always um, a fixed point of this, which corresponds to this line here, okay? And p equal to one is where the deterministic dynamics uh, lives. Okay, so if you take p equal to see if you put in this equation p equal to one, you will get this equation, which is exactly the um, the um, logistic equation. Okay, so and this this dynamics lives on this p equal to one uh, axis. Okay, now 
uh, because this p equal to one also corresponds to energy zero so if you want to so you can you can only connect uh, to uh, points of the phase space that are in in that are in uh, h equal to zero okay and these three uh, thick black lines are the lines of that corresponds to h equal to zero so you have h equal to zero when p is equal to one you have h equal to zero when uh, q is equal to zero and then you have another another um, another uh, sort of uh, this this thicker line here that corresponds to the heteroclinic uh, connection okay and the extinction happens by moving over this uh, well the, the path of higher probability of for extinction happens by moving on this, uh, on this thomas okay? thomas yes. uh, uh, last year we had a, a talk uh, by laura billings you know from from uh, Montclair State University, and she works on similar uh, similar things because she she's uh, more focused uh, strictly on epidemic modeling, and she show like when you have uh, a, a sort of SRI model and you you get this uh, uh, stochastic perturbations, then you get the same thing. You get some extra uh, path to escape some uh, endemic state. Uh, it seems, yes. it seems well, like, it seems yeah, no, no, it's, it's, it's um, I'm sure, well, I, 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 don't, I don't know exactly what, what she does, but I'm sure, I'm sure that it can be, it can it be. Seems similar, I mean, I, I don't, yeah. I can it's, send it's, you. It's, yeah. it's, yeah, yeah, please do. But yeah, I mean, adding, adding noise to these systems is something that, particularly with the COVID-19 pandemics, <laughs> people have realized that it's important to put noise. They all, I mean, they don't always do it right because, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there is a tendency of putting just some sort of uh, random perturbation and that will do. And, and indeed, sometimes that, uh, that does the trick because if you put, uh, so for example, if you, take, if you take this system here and you add here some white noise, sooner or later, you are going to have extinction. Okay, mm -hmm. because at some point you're going to put but, 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 but the scheme is similar like if she also has wkb approximation or uh, she mapped this to an yes. no, i mean this is this is a very well known uh, thing yeah. and as i said i mean this has been uh, rediscovered several yeah, times like you said <laughs> but then there is there is uh, this uh, this guy here uh uh he's in uh i don't he's, he's in california somewhere uh, no, no, he's in uh, University of Washington. Ah, yes. Uh, and uh, he's worked a lot on, on these things. Uh, there is a group of uh, people uh, based in Israel. Uh, so these two, these two guys, Kamenev is, is one of them. So this is, I mean, this is, this is, I, I haven't invented this, of course. No, 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 uh, no, this no, is, no. this is a well, this is a well-known thing. Okay. I'll send you the paper. Thank you. Okay, so uh, yeah, then just uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very close to finish. So uh, basically, uh, again, because this point here is an h equal to zero point, and this point here it's an h equal to zero point. It can only be uh, transitions between here and here if there is a path of h equal to zero that communicates these two points. So this would be this heteroclinic connection. Okay, and you find this just by uh, uh, doing just solving this equation. Okay, which uh, well, uh, in this case, because this is a one dimensional system, this can be done trivially if you have a higher dimensional system. So, one dimensional system, I mean the original stochastic system. Okay, so the dimension of the, of the Hamiltonian system is twice uh, the dimension of the, original, of the original system. Okay, so if you have a one dimensional uh, random variable, the phase space is two dimensional, so you have a p in a, in a q for each of the of the variables but in this particular case you can just solve this uh, analytically you can find that this um, that the the equation of this curve is given by by this this is just a trivial exercise okay and once you have uh, and once you have this you can calculate uh, the optimal action okay you just put that um, uh, this trajectory on the on the equation for the action and, and integrate, which in this case you can do 
uh, you can do trivially, uh, analytically, and uh, uh, therefore using this result that we were talking about, the uh, the extinction the extinction rate, okay, or the inverse of the extinction rate is uh, asymptotically tends to uh, this quantity. Okay, so in this case, uh, you can calculate this asymptotic value of the extinction time analytically. I mean, uh, this, so is something... this, this was the question the, the student had last time to, you know, to the student from Belgium, Jean-Francois. Yes, someone, someone, someone mentioned this, yes. So this will be the estimate, yes. Jean-Francois, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, and well, that's, um, that's essentially it. So uh, just to summarize. Um, so we have we have uh, this uh, this method. I mean, this method works very well uh, as all the analytical methods when you have uh, a one-dimensional uh, stochastic system. Because doing uh, so, for example, the, the, the uh, sort of um, the, determining numerically these paths uh, when you have a higher-dimensional system is much more so here you can you can do it just analytically you put h equal to zero and from there you get uh, q of p right and even if you cannot even if you cannot solve the equation analytically you can do it by uh, newton Raphson or something very very easily and you can have a numerical a numerical thing but if you have a higher dimensional system then uh, this is much more complicated and you have to resort to uh, uh, more advanced numerical methods to um, obtain these uh, these things, but in principle we have a formalism that allows us to do this uh, to do these things. Okay. Uh, well, we have seen that uh, the solutions of the Hamilton equations and its phase portrait uh, provides us with a, with a great deal of information uh, regarding uh, these events. And uh, well, sometimes, obviously, I mean this is an asymptotic method. It's not always going to work, and uh, because for for several reasons, because you are not uh, close enough to the to the asymptotic regime, or for whatever other reason, sometimes uh, this um, this uh, 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 sort of classical Hamiltonian is not enough to predict the the rare events, and then we need to uh, analyze the collect the, the ensemble of transition paths. And that's um, that's a much harder thing to do. Okay, so I, I give uh, there are some um, some uh, references of people that uh, are doing this uh, uh, very hard to make our work. Okay, and that's it. Uh, so uh, next lecture we will see numerical methods. Great, great lecture, very really nice. <laughs> Very, very okay, nice. so if, um, if, if someone is, is curious, just send me, if someone wants to see a little bit more of how we derive this path integral or whatever. Yeah, I, I, just, I will. I will. <laughs> well, uh, okay, I, I cannot promise I will have it for next uh, Tuesday, but perhaps. But yeah, no, if you can send some notes or something. Well, yes, I have some very dirty notes. So I'm not <laughs> sure that's going to make the work. But anyway, uh, next next week we will look at this and we will see. So, but uh, okay. first, before we forget, let's thank uh, Thomas. Yeah. So, I'll open the thank microphone. You. So, let's thank him. <laughs> very, very, uh, very, very interesting. Uh, so, question. Uh, uh, may I ask a question, Renault? Yes, Renaud? please, Renaud? please, Victor. Yes. So, uh, Thomas, I mean, regarding the uh, I believe first half of the the presentation, I mean, when mm -hmm. when you talked about the um, uh, actually the second one when when you talked about the um, the, the the formalism behind behind uh, what you were introduced to us in the first uh, uh, lecture, right? The um, the Markov property, I believe. Can we, because uh, I mean, when I think of the Markov property, I think of something happening uh, uh, physically, uh, locally. So for example, if I try to think of the Markov property applied to some sort of quantum system, what comes to mind is that, I, I don't know, the, the quantum system interacts with itself 
in a local manner? Like, for example, is there any way in which we could well, try quantum, to... quantum systems are a very bad uh, example of this because they are not Markov mm. at all. And this mm. is because they are entangled. Okay, so you know, you know this property. So actually yes. quantum, quantum processes are not local at all. So mm. uh, this means that, uh, so in fact, uh, stochastic quantum systems are a very active field of research, mm. but uh, basically nothing of this applies to quantum stochastic systems because they are mm. not local. And because they are not local, everything, uh, everything after this, it's not true. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because because I was about to ask you whether you could uh, sort of extend this sort of reasoning to uh, include the non non locality of what well, essentially. Yes, system. I mean, uh, I mean, of course, you, you can you can study non mark of uh, non mark of uh, systems, but uh, so yeah, I mean, basically, uh, as we will see, uh, mark of systems are characterized by this property here, and it's mm -hmm. that waiting time between two successive events. Is exponentially distributed. Okay, yeah. so uh, uh, if you have something that it's not exponentially distributed, then again, everything that I, everything that comes below after this is is useless. But there are there are uh, uh, there is a, um, the theory of renewal processes that allows you to to uh, to mm -hmm. deal with non uh, Markov uh, systems. Okay? okay, because in that in that uh, in the, in that formalism, basically, uh, uh, so basically, the fact that this is Markov uh, is is the reason why you can have this time derivative here. Okay, so this is this is telling you this is completely local time wise. Uh, if you have if you have a something that it's non-local time wise, then instead of this, the dynamics is given by a curve. Okay, and the kernel is related to the waiting time distribution that it's not exponential. But there are there are ways of extending of extending this. It's it's not it's not. Uh, if I have given the impression that you can only study Markov processes, that's definitely not true. I mean, there is no 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 no. It, 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 it not. Yeah. But you can you can, so you, can, for, you, can yes. you can you can extend uh, you can extend this in a number of ways. You can consider. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Different uh, waiting time distributions and yeah. Okay. Okay. So sounds interesting. Uh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Other questions? Let's see. I I, I lost my window with uh, YouTube. <laughs> no, no question for today in YouTube. No one has other questions. No. People are feeling shyer today. <laughs> but okay, so I'll, I'll um, so would be good if you send us the, the slides so people can. I will, I, I will, I will, I will and, do it. Yes, and, I'll, and I'll send you what Laura sent us so you can. I think there is some, some similarity in, in, the, in the example, in the idea. She, she didn't get all this detail. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Thank you very much. Wonderful okay. lecture. I'll very see much, you yeah, very much looking week. forward to the next one. <laughs> okay, very good. Thanks Thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. To Thank you. So have a nice weekend. Yeah. yeah. So thank you to everyone. See you on Tuesday. Same time. Tuesday. Bye. Bye, Thomas. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.